about almost which but we're up here at this point. I mean, I, I think that we're we're hopefully getting to a place where um, more people are recognizing the phenomenon, more willing to work with people. Uh, hopefully, some grant money will begin to come in, so people who don't have the means can be worked with, can be supported. We started a small program at Cambridge where. Uh, called PEER, a program for extraordinary experience research, which is support public education and research uh, for abductees, and um, which uh, does not, you know, involve having to pay. But I, I think that um, it's a very big problem. I mean, I think there are very few people. I mean, you know, it's interesting that most of the people that pioneered in this were not mental health professionals. They were, Bud is an artist, Dave Jacobs is a historian. Um, they, they, uh, James Harder, I think, is a, what, a, a experimental physiologist or, I'm not, you know, I mean, they're not, not engineer, they're not, they're not basically clinicians. And, uh, and little by little, clinicians are beginning to recognize this and not pigeonhole people. And I think if you inquire around in your community and call our program, we may be able to identify someone. Where do you live? You live around here? Uh, Catskills is somebody that nearby that is open to it and can talk about it. And people are starting to learn hypnosis who hadn't learned it before. And I mean, it's a it's a big problem. I mean, I I think that. Uh, it's okay to talk with friends, but the friends are often not, uh, you know, if, if you talk to other experiencers, that's one thing. But if you talk to friends who know anything about it, it can be worse, you know. Uh, yeah, but. this out there so anybody can find the address and can write to us and it goes through channels and uh, there are probably people here who have written to me and have not yet heard but hang in there and we will try to recommend somebody here. Would you object to having us take copies of this lecture you have given and present it as a program for physicians in our community? Uh, would I object to taking copies of this lecture and presenting it to physicians in their community? Uh, I, would be, I would be thrilled if you were to do that. Uh, and, and, uh, any way, any um, strategies for expanding knowledge in this area beyond those of us that are sort of already concentrated together on it is all to the good. Thank you for your question. One more question. Back there. Could you give us an update on implants? How many have been recovered to date, and what are the results of the analyses thereof to date? Uh, no, I don't want to do that. Uh, I mean, there are few, I, I don't, don't feel up to date on it enough. I know of a half a dozen or so. I know that there is no smoking gun that they, uh, the most intriguing, I mean, they, they tend to be materials we're familiar with when they're analyzed. Uh, the most intriguing one, uh, I don't know if Bud, you want to comment on the x-ray that disappeared? No, no, not too complicated. too complicated. It's such a complicated field, I don't feel as a, I, I, we can talk about it after, I mean, it's just a whole big here. Let's get one more. Old memory syndrome, how accepted is that? In society? It's a whole field in itself, I think it's very little to do with this field. I, I don't think this, the false memory syndrome is not accepted. I don't think false memory is relevant to this field. False memory has to do with a kind of political, uh, uh, a kind of political um, sort of enhancement of uh, the child abuse, sexual abuse uh, area. Uh, which is very complex within the profession itself and is not about people who are having very powerful, overwhelming, authentic 
memories of some kind, which may not be precisely what they're saying, but is more or less what they're saying. I don't think it applies to this field yet. You, you remember this Yes. Thank you. Um, I have, uh, Speak up loud. I have more comment than a question. All right. Stand up. Speak up. Speak up. Speak up. Right. Intellectual, spiritual, <coughs> and um, in the phenomenon that you're speaking of, one very primary element of the phenomenon is the outcome of the world view of a more holistic right. Uh, right. connectedness, right. multidimensional right. I think that if we carefully look at the people that live on this world, there are still 3,000 indigenous tribes that live on this planet that have this intervention. It is currently not being gotten through the neo shamanic New Age movement, which is very unique in many areas. But I think particularly if you were to address some of those areas, and particularly go out and to seek the knowledge of those people who do find the masters of this, of this and be able to explain to us, and I particularly to digress, to digress for a moment to Collins uh, just recently, I'm working with close and as I know a lot of people here, that Colin in particular as well as others that you have work have work with, and I dovetail into that community very well. This community is a community of a sacred for eons and waiting for yeah. us okay. to communicate yeah. with them. They have the same ability okay. to right here with us. Yeah, some some of you heard uh, heard him uh, those of you did he's saying that this is uh, most of the comments refer to the Western uh, mind or worldview, but that there are thousands of native cultures for whom uh, connection with other entities would not be so extraordinary, and that whose uh, spirit, knowledge, way of knowing are open to that, and that that those of us that work in this field might want to communicate with those cultures more uh, systematically to. Uh, share knowledge and information because there's a body of information out there that we've ignored that would be relevant to uh, this field, which is, I think, a good place to stop. Okay, thank you.